Hello, and welcome to the CCF Online channel. We are excited for you to be part of another worship experience. We pray that what you learn here today will deepen your relationship with Jesus. Enjoy the message. So why don't we bow our heads and just commit all of these activities that are upcoming to the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for all these planned activities that we are doing. We pray that you will use this to equip your people, to draw people to you, to uh, touch the lives of uh, the people that you will invite. And I pray, oh God, that uh, by doing so, it will expand your kingdom here on earth. And Father, we pray for the balance of our time as we look at your word to prepare us for the new year. Open our eyes, our spiritual eyes. Use your spirit to teach us this morning. And I pray that, Lord, as we hear truth, we will not only put it in our minds, but really apply it in our lives. So, Father, we now thank you. Bless our time. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Just a wave of hand. If you are here for the first time, just wave at me. I just want to acknowledge you and welcome you. Any first-timers this morning, just raise your hand. Wait, wait with me. Okay? We have a few there. So, we want to welcome you. Okay? If you need anything, uh, just approach uh, those uh, men in blue. Okay? Or maybe after the worship service, approach me. Uh, we would gladly uh, help you in whatever way we can. Okay? So, Happy New Year. Can you greet the person beside you? Happy New Year. If I were preaching in Maritalai or maybe Kakayan, I would always ask the people, please count the fingers of the person beside you, okay? Because many of the fire, fire crackers and all. But since we're in Davao, it is not legal to uh, uh, use fire crackers here. I will not ask the question, okay? So, but it's also better to check. Are their fingers still complete, okay? Maybe they went to Sama already. <laughs> because it's not it's allowed there okay so again happy new year and as we usher in okay you know god has been using ccf Davao in a magnificent way last year okay we have been impacting uh, Davao city not only in Davao but even Abum and Jensan for the kingdom of god okay just uh, i was looking at the numbers uh, the year and numbers and uh, i just want to praise god because uh, compared to the last quarter of 2014 versus the last quarter of 2015 in October, November, December average, we grew by 30%. Okay? So we want to praise God for that. We cannot get the glory because according to the Bible, it is God who causes the growth. Okay? And God uses all of us to do that. And the good thing about CCM is we know that the community where, where we are ministering to is changing. And the good thing about us is we minister uh, to this changing community by us adapting okay, to the needs of the community. And so for the past uh, 12 years, God has been using our church. Okay? But this morning, I want us to prepare ourselves for this year, 2016. So I want us uh, to be all at the same pace as we start 2016. How do you, how do we do that? I want to remind all of us of our mission, the mission of the church. Why does CCF exist? Okay? And uh, we exist because what? To make Christ committed followers. Okay? who will also make what? Christ committed follower for the glory and honor of God. That is our purpose. There's a lot of groups. They miss their purpose. So as the years progress, they forget that that is their purpose. Okay? And so what happens is they get distracted, they get diverted, why? Because they forget the purpose. Example, many uh, colleges or universities in America started as seminaries, okay? But because they lost their purpose, they now become just a business school. For example, Harvard, Princeton, okay? These are seminaries in the past, but 
now they don't even allow the Bible to be studied in those institutions. So it's always good to be in the same page every start of the year. I do this every January and June or July because during vacation time, you know, we had about two weeks, two and a half weeks vacation, you know what happens? We enjoy so much, our mind starts to uh, not think about spiritual things. So it's good that every break, Christmas break, summer break, it's always good to be reminded of our purpose. Okay? And so uh, this morning I want us to look at that. Okay? And my text this morning is found in 2 Corinthians. If you have your Bible, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I will be reading the first two verses, 18 and 19. Now all these things, all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespass against them, he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So the message this morning is very simple. Okay, Let's read the point. Go. We tell sinners that they can be reconciled to God. That is our purpose. That is our mission. We go out there and tell sinners like you and me that they can now be reconciled to God. Okay? So, let's read this again one more time so that we don't forget. We tell sinners that they can be reconciled to God. As you look at the verse in verse 18, that word reconciled, reconciliation is repeated. Okay? First time it appears, who reconciled us to himself? First appearance. And then gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Second appearance. Verse 19, namely that God was in Christ, third time, rec reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us fourth time the word of reconciliation. And if you look at verse 20, it also appears at the bottom. Be reconciled to God. So in just three verses, the word reconcile, reconciliation is used how many times? Five times. If you are familiar in the study of the word, every time you see a repeated word, it is called keyword. Just like any other key, the purpose of a key is to unlock. Like, if you have keys, for example, for your car, it unlocks the door of your car. It keys unlocks the door of your house. So repeated words or keywords in scripture unlocks the meaning of the text. So what Paul is saying is this. Our purpose is what? To tell sinners that they can now be reconciled to God. What is the meaning of the word reconciled? The word reconciled simply means that man and God can now get together. Why? Because of sin, the relationship, we are at en enmity, meaning we are enemies of God. But we can now be reconciled. That's what Paul is saying. Okay? So, the point this morning is what? We tell sinners that they can be reconciled to God. The problem is this, the enmity between God and man, okay, between the hopeless, wicked people and a holy God can now end. Okay? We can now be together. That's what Paul is saying. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the mission. That is what you and I should do this coming 2016. So it's good to be reminded of that. Now, First thing about reconciliation. In verse 18, it says, Now all these things are from God. Now, notice the word all. All. This recon reconciliation thing is all from God. What can we learn? We can learn that reconciliation is by the will of God. It is not your will. It is not my will. It is all the will of God. If God has not will that you and I be reconciled, we will remain enemies of God. Why do I say that? Because it says, now all these things are from God. 
and it supports what Jesus says in the book of John. Okay? In the book of John, Jesus said this, and he was saying, For this reason I have said to you, what did Jesus say? That no one can come to me. Not in that. No one can come to Jesus unless. Now, do you understand what's the meaning of the word unless? The word unless means this. Unless means it signals the coming of a necessary condition. Another meaning of the word unless is something has to happen before some desired consequence will follow. So apply this meaning to what Jesus is saying, what is that necessary condition? Okay? Going back to the passage, he says, you and I, you and I can never come to the Lord Jesus Christ unless a necessary condition is completed. What is that? What is that necessary condition? Unless it has been granted him from the Father. So unless the Father grants it to you and me, we will never come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, he says, for this reason I have said to you. Meaning, this is not the first time that Jesus said this. Because if you go back to verse 44, same. He says, no one can come to me. And the same word, unless. You and I cannot come. What is the necessary condition? Unless the Father who sent me draws him. If God does not draw you to himself, you and I will never come to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's like water. You have a deep uh, well. You can never draw water just by looking at it. You have to use a pail. Let's draw him. The water cannot just go up. Somebody has to put the rope in the pail, drop it into the surface of the water, try to uh, move it so that it will tilt so that you can draw water from it. That's the picture when Jesus said, unless the Father who sent me draws him. When I was a young Christian, in my mind, I thought it was I was doing one of these things. But as I study scripture, now I realize, wow, it was God who was drawing me to himself. He brought this lady who invited us. The invitation was very simple. No, no mention of Jesus, no mention of any verse in the Bible. This lady from CCF just merely invited us and told us, come. I said, come where? Just come. She didn't even mention CCF. I think she didn't mention CCF. And so I said, what do I bring? What do we bring? I said, just bring a Bible and a notebook. So, looking at my encounter with the Lord, now I realize it was all God's work. It was God who was drawing me to Himself. Because when I reached CCF, okay, during the time, there was this system called, if you are a first-timer, all the first-timers are invited outside to another room. Okay? And there is what happened. God was drawing me. How? It is written in the prophets. How does God draw us to himself? They shall all be taught of God. So Pastor Ricky Sartu was not a pastor during the time. He was the one teaching us. Okay? Sharing the gospel. So, they shall all be taught of God. And as I was listening to that, everyone was heard and learned from the Father. Then and only then, come to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, folks, as we go out there this year, as we tell sinners that they can now be reconciled, you need to remember that it is not you. It is not us. It is the work of who? Of God. So the moment you share the gospel, and the person that you are sharing to does not respond positively, and said, you know, probably they will reject you, then you don't, don't get mad. Why? Because you know that it is God who is what? Drawing, him, drawing these people to himself. If God does not draw them, then what, what should be our response? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity for sharing the gospel clearly. In whose power? Not our power, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, successful witnessing means this. 
sharing the gospel clearly in the power of the Holy Spirit and leaving the outcome to whom? To God. So if God does not draw that person during the time, your response must always be, praise God. If the person responds positively, all the more you should want, praise Him. Why? Because you understand that reconciliation is not by our will, but it is by the will of the Father. That is what reconciliation is. Okay? So, reconciliation is what? Is by the will of God. If you go back to Genesis chapter 3, remember when Adam and Eve sinned, when they disobeyed God and they partook of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, what happened? Can you still remember? Look, when they sinned, verse 9, it says, Then the Lord called to the man, Adam, and said to him, Where are you? So who is taking the initiative? It is God who is taking the initiative. So fact, when God called Adam, where are you? Where was he? Where was he? He was hiding. See, even at the time, man was hiding because they were ashamed. But who took the initiative? It is God. Look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel 34 verse 16. Let's read this together. Go. I will seek the lost, bring back the scattered. Okay? And bind up what? The broken and strengthen the sick, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with what? Judgment. Notice, who is taking the initiative? It is God. So as we go out there, as we tell sinners that now they can be reconciled to God, that the enmity between God and man can now end, you have to remember that it is called the work of who? Of God. If you are familiar with Ephesians chapter 2, it says we were all dead in trespasses and sin. Verse 4 says, but God. Notice that. It's not but man. But God, who is rich in mercy and who loves us, made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. Who makes us spiritually alive? Not us. It is God. So, you have to remember that reconciliation is whose work? God's work. Therefore, therefore, how do we apply it? We do not need to plead with God to save sinners because the heart of God is to save sinners. Instead, we need to plead with sinners to accept the salvation that God offers. That is our mission. Okay. We are to what? Let's read again. We tell sinners that they are, that they cannot be reconciled to God. Second thing about reconciliation, verse 19. Namely, Paul says, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. How? Not counting their trespasses against them. Meaning, Reconciliation can only happen if there is forgiveness of sin. Reconciliation is by the will of God. Reconciliation is by the forgiveness of sins. In this country, a lot of people think that their sins can be forgiven. How? I was looking at the calendar, the new calendar. I was checking on when the Holy Week will fall in one week and in one month. I was hoping that it will still be April. Usually it's April, right? So, and you know, my birthday is on April. And so sometimes it falls on Holy Week. So I love that it will fall on my birthday. But I was uh, frustrated because the Holy Week will happen when? March. Okay? What do people do during Holy Week? They sit for one year and in their minds, they think that on Holy Week, they do something and hope that what they're doing will erase all of their sins, right? My God, if you go to Pampanga, they will even nail themselves on the cross. You, they beat their bodies. Why? They think that that is the way to forgiveness. But folks, 
The consolation is by the forgiveness of sin. If your basis for the forgiveness of sin is strong, then you are not yet forgiven, and therefore you are not also reconciled. Understand? So, the question we need to answer is this. How are our sins forgiven? What does the Bible say? Okay. We just celebrated the Lord's Supper, which Paul said, I received from the Lord. Because Jesus was the one who established that. Jesus said in verse 27, we, When he had taken a cup, given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. Then he continues by saying in verse 28, For this is my blood of the covenant. This is my blood of the covenant, which is, what? Poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. So how are our sins forgiven? It is by the shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, if you know the animal sacrifice, what do the people do in the Old Testament? When they sin, they need to get an animal without defect, bring it there, put it on top, and then put their hand over the head of the animal, and then kill the animal until the blood will come out. But even that, even that sacrifice, it does not remove sin. It only what? Covers sin. But when Jesus, the final sacrifice, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, when He was sacrificed, the author of Hebrews said this. This is what he said. Priest, we offer sacrifice year after year, which does not take away sin. But when the final sacrifice, Jesus, the Lamb of God, died on the cross, shed His blood, then and only then, sins were taken away. Okay? That's why it says, For this is my blood of the covenant. Because the old system was the animal system, right? Which you do every year. But this new covenant, when Jesus, the final sacrifice, shed His blood, then we have forgiveness of sin. Hebrews 9.22 says this, According to the law, according to the law, is the old system, one may almost say all things are cleansed with blood and without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. So in this country, ladies and gentlemen, if they think that on Holy Week, by beating their body, nailing themselves to the cross, if ever they think that that can forgive their sin, then they will just be frustrated. They cannot be reconciled because the only way that your sin and my sin can be forgiven is by the shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you need to remember that. As we go out there next this year, as we tell sinners that they cannot be reconciled to God, forgiveness of sin can only be attained through the blood of Jesus Christ. That is how we can be reconciled. Verse 20, let's continue. Therefore, therefore, he says, we are what? We are ambassadors for Christ. Can you tell the person beside you? You have a new position this year. What is that? You are an ambassador for Christ. Meaning, meaning, as an ambassador, what is his function? If you are the ambassador to uh, Japan, for example, you represent the Philippines in Japan. If you are the ambassador to the United States, you represent the country in the United States. And the Bible says we are not representing a country. We are ambassadors for Christ. We are representing the kingdom of God. And ambassadors must behave properly. And if we, we represent the kingdom of God, all the more that you and I should behave properly. Right? So, what can we learn about reconciliation? Reconciliation is committed to us. That is our job description. So this year, ladies and gentlemen, our mission is one. We need to tell sinners that they cannot be reconciled. That is committed to us. And that's our job description. So never forget that. Because we will be evaluated based on this. Are we, did we do the mission that God has entrusted to us? We can worship, pure worship in heaven. Sometimes here, 
we have some problems, right? Sound system, reluctant, air conditioning, sometimes does not work properly. We, we can never have pure worship here. We can never have pure fellowship here. You know that. Sometimes there are frictions between members of the D group. But you can have pure fellowship in heaven. But the reason why you and I are here, ladies and gentlemen, is that you are what? Ambassadors. You represent the kingdom and you tell the people that, you know, you can now be reconciled to God. That enmity can now end. And that reconciliation can only happen. It is by the will of God. And what? Reconciliation requires that you be forgiven of your sin through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is committed to us. So this year, as you meet people, your friends, your family, your, the people that will bring, uh, God will bring your way. What must you and I do? We need to share. Share them the gospel, the good news. Do you remember Paul when he was in prison? And in Silas, they were singing praise, praise song. And all of a sudden, a miracle happened. The doors of the jail were open. And so when his guard saw that the, the doors were open, he thought in his mind that all the prisoners escaped, right? And so he wanted to kill himself. And Paul said, no, 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 don't kill yourself. Why? We're still here. We're still here. And so this guard witnessed the miracle. And so what happened? In Acts 16, 30, after he brought them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What's the answer of Paul? He was ready because he, he is the what? Ambassador for Christ. And Paul said this, Believe in the Lord Jesus and what? And you shall be saved, you and your household. So we are ambassadors. We represent the kingdom. And Paul continues in Romans by saying this, If you confess, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, what happens to you? You shall be saved. And then he continues in verse 10. He says, With the heart man believes, resulting in righteousness. With the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Verse 11, he says, For the scripture says, Whoever believes in Jesus, in him, will not be disappointed. Okay? You will not be disappointed. Verse 12, Whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But the question of the people is this. Four questions. Number one question. How then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed? Okay. Second question. How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? Third question. How shall they hear without a preacher? You understand the dilemma? Said, so, you know, how can, how can they call if they have not believed? How can they believe if they have not heard? So, how can they hear without the preacher? The fourth question is found in verse 15. How shall they preach unless they are sent? So, our job this year, just to remind all of us, put us in the same page. What's our job? We are to tell sinners that they can now be reconciled. Do you have friends who are not yet reconciled with God? What should you do? Tell them. That's why the Bible says, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring glad tidings of good things. Our job is to bring the good news of the gospel to sinners, just like you and me. If somebody did not invite me, I will remain a sinner. Right? But God used that lady to draw me to himself. And because that lady was faithful in inviting, God draws me to himself. I heard, I learned, and I come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you be one of them? The beautiful feet. How beautiful feet of those who pray glad tidings of good things. So what's our what's our mission? Let me decide that again. I will not show it first to you. We tell the sinners that they can be reconciled to God. Okay? Another thing about reconciliation, verse 21. 
He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf. Who is the he? Who's the he? Who's the he? Louder. God. God made him. Who's the he? Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf. Now, I want to clarify. Jesus did not become a sinner. He never sinned. As a matter of fact, in 1 Peter it says, No deceit was found in his mouth. So what does that mean? When, when Paul says, God made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin in our behalf. This is the meaning. God treated Jesus as if he had committed, as if he was not a sinner, as if he had committed every sin ever committed by every person who would believe. If, because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, all of my sins was carried by our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Past, present, future. Understand? So that's the meaning. God who made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin in our behalf. Okay? So, what does that mean that God treated Jesus that way? The meaning there is this. As Jesus carried all of the sins of the people who would believe in Him, God hates sin and therefore God poured out His holy wrath upon our Lord Jesus Christ. And he received that holy wrath. He suffered for that. That is the meaning. So Jesus, not a sinner, no sin, carried the sins of the world, and because God hates sin, he pours out his holy wrath upon the Lord Jesus Christ instead of us. That's why you now will understand when Jesus was hanging on the cross, what, what was one of his words? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why? Because the separation happened. When Jesus carried our sins, God hates sin, sin separates. The wages of sin is what? Is death. That's why there was separation between the Father and the Son. And when Jesus said, remember we celebrated the Lord's Supper, let this cup pass from me. It does not mean that he does not want to die. What he means by the cup is this. He did not want to have separation. He did not want to break that fellowship with the Father and the Son. That's the meaning there. Because Jesus already knew that he would suffer. And so when he said, cup pass, because he did not want to have separation from the Father and himself. And the wages of sin is what? And that's why you and I can always go to Jesus, right? Because he suffered and paid the penalty of our sins. He was not a sinner, but he paid the penalty of our sin. Okay? That's only half. Okay? By the way, when Jesus did that, reconciliation is by the work of substitution. Instead of me, separated from God, it was Jesus who became separated. He was not a sinner, but he was separated from God. But that's only half of the story, because the next substitution is the second part. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Question. Are you righteous? Are you righteous? Perfectly righteous? Tell your neighbor, right? You are not perfectly righteous. Because all of us are not perfect, right? But the good thing, another substitution, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. You know what happened? Jesus, this is us. Sinners, right? All of our sins, He carried separation from God. Jesus, perfect, perfect righteousness. Leave this earth without ever sinning. You know what happened? His righteousness was imputed to us. So when you and I die, for example, if you and I die, and we're not in the door of heaven, we knock at the door of heaven, and the door opens, and the angel will ask, whoever who is the usher in heaven, okay, 
If the person will ask, why will I let you inside the door of heaven? What will you say? Why will I let you inside the door of heaven? You know what I will say? I will tell the, the angel, whoever the person in charge of that door, you know what? Uh, my righteousness cannot allow me to go to heaven. As a matter of fact, I should be where? In the lake of fire and brimstone, which is called the second death, where there will be torment forever and ever. That should be my place. But I believe that I can enter heaven, not because of my righteousness, but because of whose righteousness? The righteousness of Jesus imputed to me. And if he, if he asked me, why was it imputed to you? Because he, all of my sins, he carried with him on the cross. And because of my sins, he was separated from the Father. That is the reason why you and I can enter heaven. Because Jesus, not a sinner, was treated by God as if he was the one sinning. And me, unrighteous, not righteous, was given, was treated by God as if I was doing only what Jesus was doing, all the righteous things of Jesus. Understand? That is the substitution that happened. Sin carried by Jesus, his righteousness imputed upon us. Understand? So, reconciliation, ladies and gentlemen, is a work of substitution. Jesus, no sin, as unrighteous, became righteous. He, not a sinner, suffered because of our sin. So, to summarize, God treated Jesus as if he had committed every sin ever committed by every person who would believe. And for us, we are not righteous, but God treats us as if we were what? Righteous. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the gospel. And if you look at the gospel, there is no works here. It is all by grace. It's all by grace. You do not deserve to be imputed with the righteousness of Jesus, but it was given to you. Remember what is grace? What is grace? And merited favor. You do not deserve it. It is given to you. So, righteousness of the Lord was imputed upon us. We don't deserve it. But it was given to us. So that is reconciliation. Now because of that, because of that, now you will appreciate that our problem is one. We have all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And you know that the consequence of sin is the wages of sin is death. But Jesus, because of the work of substitution, solved our problem. Solve our sin problem. Understand? And now, as Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, let's read this together. Go. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you have put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul is saying there is now no condemnation. No more condemnation. Why? Because Jesus, without sin, began, was treated as if he was the one sinning. Here we are, not righteous, no perfect righteousness, but, but was imputed, given the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so because we have the righteousness of Jesus Christ, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So what's the point this morning? Let's read this again. What's the point? That is our mission. So I want us all to be in the same place. So this year, what must you and I do? As we meet people, as God brings people to our circle of endurance, as God brings new people to our uh, lives, you and I must always want remember that we need to tell them, you can now be reconciled to hope, to God. And maybe some of you are this morning, today, maybe you have not been reconciled to God. 
maybe in your mind before you might be thinking that forgiveness of sin is by you know, hating yourself or doing good. Maybe now you understood that forgiveness can only happen through the blood of Jesus Christ, then you can be reconciled. You can be reconciled. Now how do you apply all of this? You know that we have the ministry of reconciliation. So how do we apply it? This coming year, let's apply what Peter said in chapter 3, verse 15. But in your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. And he says, always be prepared to give an answer to whom? To everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. So when people come to you and say, you know what, what are you doing in CCF? What must you do? Don't tell them, you know, we're worshiping there, we are being good. And the first thing that you and I should do is what? Tell them that they can now be reconciled to God. How? Because of what Jesus has done. And so are you ready? Are you always prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks to give the reason for the hope? But Peter gives us a guideline. When you do that, do this with gentleness and respect. Don't quarrel with the people. If they don't agree with you, don't get mad. Understand? Why should you get mad? Remember, reconciliation is the will of God. It is God drawing people. So if God does not draw that person during the time, we just say, praise God. At least he heard what the gospel is all about. Understand? So don't fight with them. Some of you, you don't talk to them anymore. Because they will listen to you. Okay? So, do this with gentleness and respect. Paul the same way. The last letter of Paul before he left this world, he said, preach the word. Preach the word. Okay? Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct. Rebuke. Encourage. How? With great patience and careful instruction. So my question to all of you is this. Are you ready? Are you prepared to preach the gospel in season and out of season? That, ladies and gentlemen, is our mission. So this coming 2016, I pray that when God brings people to you, they tell them. Tell them what? Sinners can now be reconciled to God. Okay? Sinners cannot be reconciled to God. If you are here, as I mentioned a while ago, if you are here, maybe in your mind before forgiveness of sin is by doing other things. And maybe today you have realized that forgiveness of sin, so that you can be reconciled, forgiveness of sin is based on the blood of Jesus. And the Bible says you need to repent. Repent is changing of the mind. Changing of the mind. We used to think this way, you repent by changing your thinking. So if you are here today, you think that reconciliation is because of your work, not because of the will of God, then you repent. If you think that forgiveness of sin is by good works, by doing one of these things, then repent. Because the forgiveness of sin is through the shed blood of Jesus. And if you are, you've been a Christian for so long, maybe you have not really understood your job description. What's our job description again? We are, tell your neighbor, your job description is, you are ambassadors for Christ. So maybe you have not represented Jesus properly. Maybe you didn't understand your job description, so you just, you know, coast along in your Christian life. This year, I pray that you will do that. Now imagine, imagine now. Okay? Why don't you do imagine? If all of us will do that this year, what do you think will happen? Wrap up to today, prepare food. Okay? We are really full. And maybe in the middle of the year, we'll probably have another service at 6 o'clock because the third service is also uh, increasing. Okay? So, if all of us will do that, our job description, imagine what will happen. We will explode. So Manila told me the last December, Bob, I think you need to look for your own place. Look for the property in the Bob. So next week we be our prayer and fasting. What is our major prayer request? Lord, provide for us a 
place that we can call our own, design our own specs, design it in such a way that we can accommodate as many people. So that should be one of our prayer requests this coming prayer and fasting. I know, if all of us will do that, we will explode. Not because of us, but because of who? Because of God. Let's all rise and cross the Lord. Lord, if you are here, maybe God spoke to you, and now you understand that reconciliation is God's will, that reconciliation is by the forgiveness of sin. Maybe you have a wrong thinking in the past, and this morning you want to change your mind. Tell God. Lord, thank you for opening my eyes, opening my spiritual eyes to see that I can be reconciled with God, that this enmity can end. And it is by believing in what Jesus has done, that he shed his blood for the forgiveness of sin. He was buried and rose again from the dead. I claim your promise that if I believe, I will be saved. If you've been a Christian for so long, and maybe you have not really represented the kingdom of God in the right way. Now you know that you are an ambassador for Christ. That you have been entrusted the ministry of reconciliation. Make a commitment this morning. Tell God that you will be a faithful ambassador. That when God brings people your way, you will tell them that they can now be reconciled. Father, we anticipate 2016 will be another wonderful year for all of us. Thank you for all the blessings. Father, I, I pray that you will continue to shower your blessing upon each and every family represented here. And as we receive your blessing, I pray that we will also be a channel of blessing to others, especially the truth of the gospel. As we have experienced salvation, Father, I pray that we will also tell others about this wonderful, good, and amazing news that man and God can now be reconciled. Thank you, Lord. We pray all of this.